a response to a boomer's boomer recruiter's rant on LinkedIn. Oh no, should this have been on LinkedIn Lunatics? No, it shouldn't have, but this is a career question. All right. I came across a LinkedIn post yesterday that left me both bothered and frustrated slash kicking myself for not screenshotting it. A corporate recruiter, let's call him a boomer, for the sake of context, went on a rant, backing it up with a screenshot of someone's LinkedIn profile featuring 20 plus work experiences. His main reason, he wouldn't consider a candidate unless they'd been with an employer for at least four to five years, an employer. According to him, two years is a blip and three years barely scratches the surface. Now let's get real. In this era of COVID, layoffs, companies folding and whatnot, job stability is often a luxury many of us don't have. I, for one, have been laid off three times in the last four years due to reasons entirely out of my control. Company shutdown, office closures, financial struggles of the firm, etc. Yet this recruiter, perhaps echoing a boomer sentiment and seemingly oblivious to the current job market dynamic, sounded almost shaming in his tone. It's disheartening, especially when this view is echoed in his recruiting circle. So here's my two cents to him and those who share his views. I wish I could have stayed longer at my jobs, climbing up the ladder, but sometimes life has other plans. We, especially the younger generations, are navigating a world that's rapidly changing. A little compassionate understanding wouldn't hurt. As for my job history, I've had four different jobs with multiple promotions at each. It's not about the length of time spent at the job, but the growth and experience gained. And I sympathize with this person. I'd say yes, especially if your career is less than 10 years. Well, I'd say less than six, six, less than four to five years, then it obviously would be it with what's gone on in the last, I say since 2020, uh, it's been the, the time of people leaving jobs with, with the great resignation that the amount of the, the incentives for job hopping right now are just so great. I mean, that it is hard for companies to find good talent and whenever they find it, they they're willing to pay up for it. And, and also people are putting up with less things with jobs. The market around 401ks instead of pensions incentivizes people to job hop. And, and companies do so much to suppress the salaries of the people that they have in hand. And they'll pay more money to hire new talent off the street. So it just makes sense that employees will jump around. It, that, that is just reality. The, the best way to make more money is to, to job hop nowadays. And there's not really much of an incentive to stay at a current employer especially whenever money is the priority. That being said, if you have a 20 year career and you never stayed anywhere for four and a half, four or five years, that would be a little bit of a red flag to me. But yeah, if you're early in your career, it, it's unreasonable to expect somebody to have been at the same place for four or five years. I, I've been, at, I've been at Zachary for five years. So that's a, uh, it's a long time. And I guess I, I guess I've been at an employer for long enough, uh, to to have met this recruiter's requirements uh, to be a recruited employee. I'd say that two years is a blip and three years barely scratches the surface. I'd say that six months is a blip. Two years is long enough to really get into a really good rhythm at a company. And three years is, is, a, good, is a good stint at an employer. I think, it, and then four to five years is, is definitely whenever, if you've been somewhere for four or five years, and that's a good time to, at least start looking and considering because especially if you're four to five years into your career and you've been with one employer that entire time, then you're probably, you even if you've gotten really good raises, you know, starting salaries in college are 60, uh, for college grads, you know, 40 to $70,000 depending on the industry. So stay, say you start at, you know, sixty five, seventy thousand dollars even five years into your career, if you've gotten ten percent raises every single year, you're still barely making a hundred thousand dollars a year. And you probably can jump somewhere to get at least a thirty, forty, fifty percent bump from that, uh, if you've developed really good skills. So yeah, if you've been an employer for three years, that's whenever you've kind of gotten enough experience, I feel like it's a decent time to start looking. And if you've been there for five years, then you definitely should be at least heavily considering the value of potentially jumping to another employer. So yeah, this is a little bit of a, I guess, boomer sentiment, but my boomer father encourages me to, to look for new jobs and, and to know my worth and to look at the, the market for what people with my years of experience are. So not every boomer has this uh, mentality. There's some good boomers out there. Let's not, 
label all the boomers negatively. But as for your job history, you've had four different jobs, multiple promotions to each. That's great. I'd say you say it's not about the length of time it's been a job, but the growth and experience gained. I'd say that it is about the growth and experience gained at the job, and you have to have a little bit of length of time spent at a job to get that growth and experience. But hey, that's a, that's a good rant. I like it. Very well said. And hey, job hopping is okay. That's, that is the way <laughs> employers don't want us to job hop. They also don't want us to talk about how much money we make. Plenty of people in the, the employers and in the industry will say things because it, it doesn't benefit them for you to hop from job to job and make more money each long time along the way. It doesn't benefit them for you to tell your co colleagues how much you make so that, that way they know that they're that they're underpaid and undervalued. It doesn't help them. So they're going to continue to perpetuate these kind of things. This guy's a recruiter. He probably hates it because he can't find people that have the tenure and, and an experience that he can make a judgment. But I'm sure that other recruiters can, can look at somebody's resume and make a good judgment about whether or not they'd be a good fit. And, and yeah, I mean, if, if that's a company that, that expects people to stay there for four or five plus years, first of all, that's an unreal expe unrealistic expectation nowadays, in my opinion. I th I'd say that, you know, there's other ways that you can manage that at a company. Like, for example, you could you could have a vesting schedule where, you know, company match vests after a certain amount of time. So you ideally, most people are staying with your company until at least that amount of time. But then expect a lot of them to leave exactly after that amount of time as well, because that's just going to be a thing in their head. Hey, I vested. All right, bye. That's just a cost of doing business. And that's the world that we live in. And, and the good companies and the, the companies that are going to have the staying power are going to be the companies that know how to navigate that. So that's my take. And Good post, Mr. or Mrs. Monster Div on Reddit. I'm not miscommunicating. I just made a pilot, then they threw me on the stations. Now I'm not complaining. Now I'm not complaining. My thoughts get complicated. I cannot explain the lameness. Never losing focus because I ain't chasing payments. Still playing in the basin while I'm working on arrangements. They heard the kid in 50 countries. Thank God that's amazing. But I'd rather think Spotify. They put me on the stations.